bring our ticket holders there and Hey, Dub Nation. This is Poor Man's Commish, your uh, credential insider here, and um, back at the Blue, Mo Blue Mile again. Um, we had um, practice, and we had Steve Kerr, Quinn Cook, Clay Thompson, and Andre Iguodala. Uh, we're the day before uh, game two, so um, here's what happened at practice. Uh, first off, Got to see Damian Jones again, um, just shooting and, and also going up against uh, assistant coaches. And uh, one of them, his name's Luke, had, had one of those uh, like fake arms that, that's up, like a paddle arm type thing that would make your shot more difficult. Um, this is a basketball training uh, prop. and. Uh, Damian Jones was going up against that, had a few dunks. You know, the guy's a very athletic 6'11 uh, center. We're fortunate to have him. He looked great. Um, we also had uh, Mark Medina was um, asking questions about Clay. Looks like he's going to write about Clay. So the, the subject matter during the Q&As got really interesting because it was about Clay. And so Steve Kerr had a little anecdote about when Clay doesn't have to do media availability, he just pumps his fists and goes, yeah, and, uh, or yes. And then uh, Quinn Cook said that he is, uh, uh, Clay is a, is a vocal leader, <laughs> which was surprising and provides a lot of energy to the team. It's just not stuff that you would normally hear about Clay. And then we had Clay himself, and he just, he went off about Portland and Oregon and talking about, you know, the lakes he might jump in, even though it's really cold out there. The, the greenery, uh, the uh, uh, just the nice weather and uh, the rainy weather. Uh, he said he's a chameleon, so he can handle the rain uh, as well as the sunshine, as as we know already. Him uh, being in L.A. or liking L.A. a lot and the Bay, he uh, compared Portland to um, the Bay Area as well. Um, obviously not as rainy, but. Um, yeah, he has a lot of family there. He spent a lot of time there. Was a Blazers fan when he grew up because his dad played for the Blazers. His favorite player it was Rashid Wallace. So you got to go check out those videos that are now on our YouTube, just uploaded. Uh, we had a lot of waiting around before Andre went up, and so that was um, that took a little bit of time to uh, to just really just, we were just sitting around, and I was. Um, uh, remembering some uh, funny video with Kareth Burke where uh, Clay one time was at uh, a fortune cookie factory. They were doing a warrior segment and uh, he was teaching her how to do a fortune cookie or uh, make a fortune cookie. Uh, so, you know, from scratch, you know, there's at a fortune cookie shop down the street from here. So um, we sort of just had to kill some time before Andre went up there and uh, and I don't have all of his um, interview because um, I didn't even know he was going on. I, I thought that was it until someone told me, so I had to rush back and uh, film that, and I only got a part of it. So I'm going to try and reconstruct that full interview. Um, looking ahead to tomorrow, um, well, uh, game two, obviously uh, the Blazers need to make some adjustments. I think Terry Stotts got pretty much crucified for him not trapping Steph, but his uh, answer... Uh, in the press conference was that um, uh, Steph scored basically 23 points in eight minutes against uh, the Rockets' trap. So I can understand where he's coming from, and uh, if you've ever coached a basketball team, you you know that uh, you got to kind of protect your house. Excuse me, protect your house, which is if uh, people start criticizing your 
every decision you've got to put a stop to and just say, let me coach. So I think that's what was happening yesterday when uh, Anthony Slater asked him uh, that question and he sort of brushed it off. Um, and of course, Slater came out with the article, which is why he was asking the question. I haven't read that article. I'm sure it's a really good one and everything. But yeah, I'm, I'm just commenting on um, the reaction to that. I, I just, I just really think that it, it just came down to CJ and Damian being really tired coming from Denver. They didn't go home to Portland first. They went straight to the Bay Area. And Steve Kerr said as much after the game that the Warriors um, had a little bit more rest. Now, as far as game two is concerned, um, hey, you know, one thing, let's not forget, this, this could be Damian's last game at Oracle. Let's say they get swept, right, 4-0, then, then this is his last game at Oracle. I'm thinking, you know, Damian probably knows that in the back of his mind. I just, I just think he might come out, you know, in a blaze of glory tomorrow kind of thing, or go out in a blaze of glory at least. Um, no pun intended on the blaze part, but uh, look for Damian to have a big game because just because of those factors there. So that's my take so far. So chill on the Terry Stotts crucifixion, number one. Um, and number two, uh, look out for Damien having a big game tomorrow. All right. Um, and check out our YouTube for uh, the awesome clay-related content. All right. Take care, guys. Tomorrow, I will. Uh, there will not be a short shoot-around because it's an early tip-off, 6 o'clock p.m., uh, relatively early. So um, I will report to you from Oracle or about three hours before, so 2.30 p.m. or 3 p.m. Pacific time from Oracle. See you then.